Last week was the worst ever week I've ever experienced in Warhammer. And I once lost five games in a row all on the same weekend. But believe me, this was worse. And it has led me to a dark revelation about what Games Workshop have been secretly up to over the last year. This is pretty terrifying, and I think it spells disaster for the future of Warhammer. But to explain why, first we need to talk about what Games Workshop just revealed and how it has absolutely screwed over a lot of players, including me. So for context, Games Workshop had a live stream event recently where they showed off a ton of new models. Horus Heresy got some, frankly, awesome reveals, and then there was Warhammer 40k. And for Warhammer 40k, we got, well, all right, so there are two armies slated for an update next, Sisters of Battle and Gene Stealer Cults. Both happen to be the armies that I've been focusing on for 10th edition. So pretty busy summer for me, right? Well, <laughs> I've been loving both of these armies. I'm having a lot of fun with these girls and uh, kind of human three-armed goblins. So this event should have been incredibly exciting for me, but unfortunately, we have to talk about it. So firstly, Games Workshop revealed a new model for sisters, and this is where things started to go very, very wrong. So I love the Seraphim and Zephyrim models. They're legitimately some of my favorite Warhammer minis, and the new model that Games Workshop revealed is a Cannon S with a jump pack. And while I should be really excited for that, no joke, she looks exactly 100% like a standard Zephyrim. I'm really not kidding. Here is the new Canon S, and here is a Zephyrum Superior. Compare the two models, and I can't tell the difference. The breastplate is the same, the cloth tabard flows between the legs exactly the same way. There's the same details, the same jump pack. There is literally nothing special about this new character, except that she gets an even more generic head, and they've replaced her flight stand with some copy-paste generic terrain, and as a result, she looks like she's falling rather than soaring majestically in the sky. The only cool element to this model is the Eviscerator, but otherwise she is a copy-paste model made up of existing sprues. I don't want to be mean here, but I really think that someone made this model on their lunch break. And Games Workshop have been doing this for a while. There is an entire range of Space Marine Captains that are generic copy and paste models that just make their way out the door. And now sisters are being treated the same way. It's incredibly disheartening. I mean, Games Workshop can make great looking models, but executives are clearly pushing their design team to create too many too fast, and this is the result. And what makes this even worse is that it's being sold in a giant expensive army box, probably going to cost something like £135, and it comes filled with 15 more Zephyrin models. They have themed this box as a flying army, I guess. I mean, it's a very specific theme, but wait, no it's not. It's not a flying army, because they've just stuck an exorcist in here too. You know, the slow lumbering artillery unit, because, uh, uh, they just needed to make up the points to justify the price. This was all a bit of a lazy disappointment. And I don't often call Games Workshop lazy, but in this case, it fits. This is the definition of a filler model, just performatively done because something has to come out. It's incredibly disappointing, barely worth the plastic, honestly. Just buy the Zephyrin box and kit bash your own. I mean, that's what everyone else is doing, because buying this model feels like a scam. Speaking Speaking of which, my other army, <laughs> Gene Stealer Cults, hurrah, uh, they did not come well out of this either. So check this out, right? Gene Stealer Cults have 22 entries in their codex, of which 13 are characters. That's more than half of their data sheets are just character models. There is one thing that Gene Stealer Cults do not need, and it's another character. And of course, Games Workshop have delivered another character. This is the Bene Effectus. Now, in this instance, at least, the character looks okay. It definitely has a vibe. Personally, I'm not really a fan. It's not what I was looking for at all with Gene Stealers. I mean, we already have two better looking Psyker models, so adding another one doesn't really impress me, even if you give them a big brain. At least the giant brain does give 
give the Benefictus a slightly unique silhouette though. Except we have sort of seen this model before. The big brain boy archetype was arguably done better in the Delacu Spiker and the Blackstone Fortress Rogue Psyker models. Although apparently this one is a woman. Whatever, I'm still gonna paint her blue, call her Megamind, and you can't stop me. I will find ways to satisfy my sick, twisted fantasies. Another win for the minions hobby. Still, we really did not need a new character. Honestly, there's just so much design space for Gene Stealer cults that GW are just leaving on the table. I really wish they'd go further down the workers rise up vibe of the faction. I mean, the army basically already looks like the Brotherhood of Nod. Why not just go all in? It's not like EA care about it anymore anyway. As a faction, we are really struggling with anti-vehicle right now, so why not produce something like a, a guerrilla ambush rocket team that can fire rockets and redeploy behind cover? You know, like a three-man mobile AT squad. That would be really cool, and it would empathize, and it would empathize, and it would emp- and it would demonstrate their guerrilla tactics. But no, we get a giant brain. Okay. Meanwhile, Games Workshop are revealing these awesome looking nightmare gene stealer models for Necromunda. I mean, God, these would have worked so well as new units for the cults. I mean, radioactive gene stealers, make them a bit weaker, make them explode. That would have been pretty cool. And obviously, of course, this new brain bug is being sold in a giant battle force. Sorry, did I say a giant battle force? I meant a slightly bigger version of our combat patrol with an extra truck. This one at least feels pretty good, mostly because our combat patrol felt pretty good. There's a lot of models in here. Forget about the points values, free yourself from that made up value. But still, the Benefictus is locked away in here. And because this battle force is marginally good, it is going to sell out immediately like the orc battle force did last month. That was gone literally in seconds at launch. So what the hell is going on? Why was this 40k event so lackluster? Why did both factions just get a single new character? And the answer is simple and it's sad. The profit margin. Games Workshop love releasing individual hero characters because it means that they can copy and paste a few existing STL files together, put them on a small sprue, maybe add one or two weapon options, make the model monopose so you don't even have to think about it, and then sell it for $35 and call it a day. No, sorry, I mean sell it in a big bundle of existing models for $200, then release it six months later, if that, for $35, and then call it a day. These character models are just an excuse to print money, but it genuinely sucks for anyone hoping for cool stuff from these releases. I mean, Games Workshop are not an indie studio, and frankly, I wouldn't mind the occasional filler release if it wasn't for one, the price, two, selling them in FOMO boxes that exploit the player base, and three, alongside these fillers, everything else gets ruined. Because what I've talked about isn't even the worst part about this event. Oh no, oh no, no, no. It gets way, way, way worse because Games Workshop have also deigned to update the combat patrols of these two factions. And it's really, really not good. Okay. Let's start with sisters. They have lost their previous combat patrol. Now, this old patrol could always have used an update. The models in it are monopose. They have no weapon options and that sucks. But as a bundle, that combat patrol had the upside of coming with a large variety of models. You'd get three flagellants, five seraphim, five repentia, 10 sisters, a penitent engine, a rhino, and a cannon ass. That's a huge amount of variety. Like buying a pack of the small cereal boxes. You're not gonna get as many, but hey, you have fun mixing them up. And it's a fantastic introduction to the faction. You could pick up one of these combat patrols and get a feel for how sisters play or how cereal tastes. I'm hungry. Do you want to go down the Deep Strike Seraphim route? Well, you get a bunch of those. Or focus on the Ecclesiarchy with the Penitent Engine and the Arco Flagellants. Or try out the blobby Sisters Only Cannon S and Battle Sisters. Genuinely, this box is a fun time and just gives a little bit of smidge of everything. And then we learned that it's being replaced by this thing, this new combat patrol, and it's abysmal. There's no other word for it. 10 battle sisters, one cannon S, 10 arco flagellants, and five sacrosancts? This does not feel good. There's no vehicle in here, no centerpiece, nothing exciting at all. It's a massive drop in miniatures. I mean, there's 26 miniatures in each box, but one contains two vehicles, the other doesn't contain any. And taken as a whole, there's just no discount at all in the new combat patrol. I mean, okay, sure, you basically get a free cannon S, but that's 
it. In fact, we've seen this new combat patrol before. It used to be our boarding patrol, except it came with 10 Repentia rather than Arco Flagellants, and it was $20 cheaper. This, again, just feels like a giant scam. The box is awful, and Sisters of Battle players are extremely disappointed. Everyone I've spoken to is just aghast that this is the new combat patrol. Genuinely, everyone's just surprised, shocked, and horrified. But what's even worse than that is the Gene Stealer cult update. Because yeah, they also got a combat patrol update and dear god, Gene Stealers just became basically impossible to collect now without literally doing a bean and robbing the stock market. And I'm not exaggerating here. Look, Gene Stealer cult is a horde faction. They are cheap and cheerful and they come with tons and tons and tons of bodies on the field. That means that those bodies need to be affordable to buy. And they used to sort of be reasonable to collect. The old Gene Stealer cult combat patrol came with 20 neophytes, 5 abominants, 5 hybrids, a magus, and a rock grinder. This is a fantastic combat patrol and single-handedly made the Gene Stealer faction collectible at a relatively reasonable price. I mean, this box made it possible to get the 60 neophytes that everyone would use in their army. Seriously, three of these combat patrols form the bases of most Gene Stealer cult player armies. Remember, half our data sheets are characters. We all use a ton of neophyte troops. It's all we've got. And this box contains almost everything that isn't a character data sheet. So what are Games Workshop deigning to replace this with? Well, we're getting this Bizarro World box that has five bikes, 10 acolytes, a Jeep, and a Jacko Alphys. W what the fuck? Th there's no neophyte sitting here. Who's going to want this? I mean, sure, okay, the models look cool. Ridge Runners and Jackals genuinely fuck. But why are they in here? This is such a niche collection of models, and it's becoming our new combat patrol. And it basically means that the Gene Stealer cults will be impossible to collect going forward. This feels like it was designed for people who have already bought three copies of the previous combat patrol and are now looking to dip their toes into a biker gang for some reason. This new combat patrol is not one that you'll want to buy three times. This isn't even one that you might want to buy once. What a downgrade. I genuinely think that this combat patrol is going to cut the potential player be a size of Gene Stealer cults literally in half. That's three whole people who won't be able to play now. And have you noticed something? There's a little dark secret to both of these combat patrols. Yes, that's right. They're getting smaller and more expensive than the previous iterations all across the board. I mean, aren't these things meant to be the starting point for new players? Aren't combat patrols what people get recommended to buy when starting a Warhammer army? And that's when I started to realize that there is something deeper here because 10th edition Warhammer is going to forever be known in the future as the edition where Games Workshop fully enshittified Warhammer. Now, this is a bit of a technical term, but enshittification is the process by which platforms, or in this case, games, die. It's a pretty simple process. First, a platform or games company are good to their users. Oh, what a lovely starter set. And then once they have a captive audience, they abuse those users. Oh, a new codex? Oh, the combat patrol got worse? And then everyone leaves. So the platform dies. While this was first coined to describe platforms like Facebook, Amazon, Reddit, it has grown to include almost every single industry. And Warhammer has not been safe from this. Companies fall into this trap because in the short term, it feels really, really good. Oh yeah, let's push for more money. And it works. It does make more money. Warhammer is making a lot of money for Games Workshop right now, but it's only going to work for a while. Right now, Games Workshop are making their money from a big wave of new people who entered the game during COVID. There's a lot more Americans that have joined the Warhammer franchise. And that number might keep growing for a little bit, but squeezing that group with worse products and price increases could be disastrous if there's there's not another cohort of new users ready to replace them in the background. And attacking combat patrol value is especially dangerous for Games Workshop because that is genuinely where most people start with the game. It's the first real value acquisition for a faction that you want to play if you just don't pick up a starter set. And it makes 2000 point armies a little bit more attainable for lots of people, especially Gene Stealer cult faction players. And yet Games Workshop are busy remaking combat patrol
Patrols to be smaller, less interesting, worse value, and increasing the price. Sisters of Battle and Gene Stealer Cults aren't alone here. Every single army update in 10th edition has come with a combat patrol update, and most of the time, they get way, way worse. For example, the Space Marine Combat Patrol was updated at the start of 10th, and this should have been a massive warning sign to all of us because it is really, really bad. Games Workshop have the gall to advertise this combat patrol as containing 13 miniatures, which is extremely cheeky because you actually only get 12 miniatures in this thing. You get five Flaby Marines, their scientific name, five Terminators, a captain and a librarian. That, that's 12. Hmm, that's strange. Oh, that's right. There's a bonus teleporter Homer. I mean, sure. Okay. But are we really going to count that? I mean, even worse, the box set itself is literally a scam. Firstly, it comes with barely any discount. Like, you save about £10. That's not enough to buy a single character. The starter set offers way more value. And after the incoming price increase that we know is coming, there won't even be a saving on this thing. Likewise, the Adeptus Mechanicus got a terrible box update in 10th. The Necrons got really screwed screwed over with a terrible update. The latest one, the Orc Combat Patrol, is earth shatteringly bad in so many ways. It went from a box filled with core troops, a death dread, a helicopter orc boys, and transformed into a, a, a feral orc box. Like what the f***? This isn't even an orc combat patrol anymore. It's a beast snaga patrol. This is useless to most players. And it was that box release that sealed it to me. There is a terrifying reason for these changes. It's simple. In this new world of Warhammer and shitification, the role of combat patrols have changed. They aren't being designed to make it easier to buy into Warhammer 40k anymore. They're being designed to shift obscure models that people don't typically buy. That's why the new system Patrol has Sacrosacts in there. They're notoriously bad and not very popular. It's why the Gene Stealer Cult box is filled with jackals and why the Orc box is just beast snaggers. When looking through the list of all the combat patrols, it's clear which ones are good and which ones are terrible. And it's almost uniformly the combat patrols that haven't been replaced yet for 10th edition, which are good. Which means that as they all get replaced, Warhammer is going to get even more expensive. This this is shrinkflation. This is in shitification. This is the new Warhammer. And I think we need to take a stand against it. I don't think that this is the right direction. I think it's a total mistake. Games Workshop have never been more profitable. It makes no sense for them to be shrinking down the boxes and increasing the price. Ultimately, it's just not healthy for the game. And if you want to help me get this message out, subscribe to the channel or support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash discourse miniatures for bonus videos, streams, fun community, and a free war game. And a massive thanks to my patrons, especially Crypto Kev. I'll catch you all next time. Bye bye.